The Biblical Beast. I only mention this theory because multiple employees at Mr. Beast brought it up in a way that seemed like they unironically thought Jimmy might be controlled by Satan. I'm agnostic. One, he calls himself Beast. Two, he promotes money and consumerism. Three, he died and rose on the third day. Four, he performs miracles like healing the blind. He has used deception to cultivate a large following. And six, he bought a church. He placed images of Jesus with his own Beast logo. I'm just gonna present the evidence that Mr. Beast is the Antichrist as I see it. And it's quite baffling, to be honest. Oh man, ladies and gentlemen, if you weren't aware, this was a section of the video that was supposed to be in part one of Dogpack 404's debut video, but unfortunately, it didn't make the final cut, and you could see why. Though it is mentioned in the document that he posted publicly on Twitter that he links to is that it's involved in his evidence document. He did record and edit the section, but I assume didn't make the final cut because maybe he showed it to someone to like peer review and they told him, hey man, <laughs> you probably want to cut out that section. Um, he actually posted the full copy though of the segment on Twitter. The crazy deleted Mr. Beast exposed video, Do Dog Pack 404's full evidence document shows a lot of the allegations against Mr. Beast that didn't make the final cut, including crypto scams, fake philanthropy, and a section where some think Mr. Beast might be working with Satan. Video below. And he comes in the comment section saying, here's the deleted Antichrist segment. I don't believe it, but if Jimmy starts marking people, I'm a pass. So granted, he does preface all of this by saying that he doesn't really believe in it, but he still thought in the moment that it was worth bringing up in an evidence document and to record and potentially put in the video because there are accusations at the end of the day. But the problem is, is that all accusations, just because someone accuses someone of something, they shouldn't be included in a document or like a fleshed out evidence video piece just because a few people were saying it. Just because a handful of Christians were saying some insane shit about Mr. Beast at the company doesn't now mean it should be included in the video and you're gonna see why because Holy fuck. This segment is a complete schizo post, and actually later on I talked to him in a call about this, so wait till the end for a crazy surprise, but here, let's get into this. Okay, now I personally don't subscribe to any religion. I think there's wisdom in many religious texts. I don't take them literally, but to each their own. The only reason I'm talking about this theory that, you know, Mr. Beast is the Antichrist or whatever is because it's so popular that multiple people, Mr. Beast works in the Bible Belt, and multiple people at Mr. Beast talked to me about this theory as if they legitimately believe there is a chance that Mr. Beast is the Antichrist. So his point is basically that, hey, at the end of the day, I don't believe in this, but a lot of people are making these accusations, so I felt like it was even worth platforming. But I just completely disagree with this, because it's worth platforming accusations if the accusations in of itself are a problem. Like for example, if somebody um, accuses someone of being a pedophile and they did some sexual act to a 13 year old for example, even though they don't have any proof and they just have their testimony word of mouth, I think that's fine for people to come forward with their stories and tell this testimony as they saw it, you know what I mean? Even though if they don't have proof. But the problem is, is that if someone then alleged someone was a pedophile because they were 19 and had a relationship with a 17 year old or of an 18 year old, obviously the whole core and crux of the accusation is flawed. So that is something you should not platform, for example, and that belongs nowhere near your video or evidence documents. And I think that's the core of the problem here because even the accusation of what people are alleging is just complete schizo posts that obviously like does not show that Mr. Beast is Satan or the second coming of, of like the Antichrist or whatever. Like the story, the accusation accusation story isn't even correct in the first place. So at that point, you gotta scrap the whole thing and not even talk about it. And as I talk about this, keep in mind with religious texts, there's many different translations and interpretations. Okay, I just watched like one video and read the Wikipedia article on the book of Revelation. I'm just gonna present the evidence that Mr. Beast is the Antichrist as I see it. And it's quite baffling to be honest. So the book of Revelation is the final part in the Christian Bible. Uh, it is a prophecy describing how the world will end. Uh, it describes two beasts. Uh, first, the beast from the sea, who is the Antichrist, and the second beast from the earth, which is the false prophet. Dude, how did we not see it? The beast of the sea. Team Seas? Hashtag Team Seas. Dude, it was right in front of our faces. And the beast of the earth is Team Trees? Bro, dude. Yeah, this guy might be onto something. The theory is actually that Mr. Beast is the second beast, by the way. This second beast performed great miracles. It made fire come down out of heaven to earth in the sight of everyone. A CGI edit that Mr. Beast put in this video to just fucking like make entertainment value is now shown to come down and bring fire on the earth. Dude. 
come on, this, the fact that this even like was remotely close to the final cut of the video is an insane schizo post. I mean, he's literally reading off a fucking green text, anonymous, like random person online. This second beast performed great miracles. It made fire come down from heaven to earth in the sight of everyone. And it deceived all the people living on earth by means of the miracles. And you know, it, okay, it would be one thing if it was a meme. And I thought this was first a meme when Dog Pack, uh, you know, first showed this. I thought, surely, this has got to be like a poorly landed joke. You know, he tried to do a joke, it didn't land. Similar to like what iDubs did with the Keemstar content cop, where he was calling Keemstar star a sociopath and went down traits of sociopath i thought surely it's got to be something like that but no then when i had a conversation with him and as he explained in uh, the document and and how he prefaced this section he's saying all this because it's allegations and he feels like it's right to platform any accusations when that's not right you should not platform all accusations because some accusations discredit some of the more legitimate ones because even the accusation story is from the beginning, so no, this should not be included. And it deceived all of the people living on earth by means of the miracles which it was allowed to perform in the presence of the first beast. This is just like Jesus rising Lazarus on the third day. Dude, that, that's the right guy, right? Okay, you know, I haven't been to school in a while. I haven't been to, uh, you know, religious ad in a while, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Dude, Mr. Beast healing the blind? Dude, who the fuck does this guy think he is? I mean, hey, again, I want to preface all this by saying he did have the foresight to not include this in the final video, but fuck, man. The fact that this was even close to the final cut is just hilarious, and it's, like, worth laughing at. I think he should delete it out of the documents, but hey. So this second beast is a false prophet performing great miracles uh, as a means of distraction to get people to worship him. When Mr. Beast first started seeing success on YouTube, he bought a church. Uh, where the heck are we, and what do you film here? Yeah, so uh, we're to be specific, you're in a church. So when I first started, there were there, there's just no warehouses or studios in Greenville, North Carolina. Yeah. So uh, there are a lot of churches though. We're in the Bible Belt. Yeah. So I bought a church, and then we converted it by just like um, you know, basically taking all the pews out, and just converted <laughs> it into a studio. Literally removing imagery of Jesus and replacing it with the mark of the beast. <laughs> Dude. The mark of the beast, how could we not see? How do you watch that clip of Mr. Beast like understandably explaining it? Of saying like, hey man, there just wasn't a lot of warehouses or studios, so we had to like end up, uh, you know, getting a, ch a church because of the way that the surrounding was around us. There wasn't a lot of like big spaces for recording, so we ended up having to do a church. How do you look at that and say like, dude, he's trying to make his fucking mark? Like you went in all these churches and purposely took the crosses and crucifixes and turned them upside down, spray painting a Mr. Beast logo on top of it. You could see why I thought this was just a poorly landed joke, but when I had a conversation with him and I talked to him about the specific point, he got pretty defensive and he seemed like he was legitimately defending it, as if this was anything close to a legitimate point. What was that Satan part of your document? Where Mr. Beast was Satan? Not like um, the biggest point, whatever, but I thought it was pretty funny and interesting to see. Yeah, I thought that was interesting too. I mean, people at the company sort of had this like ongoing meme or joke about evil Mr. Beast, but then there was like actual Christians at the company who like low-key theorized and like speculated on whether jimmy was like the antichrist like unironically okay so i guess not that i'm in a position to give any advice of course okay but i would say mm -hmm. i feel like even including stuff like that it does hurt your overall points because it can like write you off as saying like dude this guy's saying insane shit like obviously this isn't proven i saw like one of the examples it was that apparently he used a church in one of his videos and i feel like points like that should just get cut out of any kind of document calling someone out because it's giving the other side free ammunition to respond with. Well, yeah, if you misrepresent the point like you just did, I guess it would give you free ammunition. Um, wait, sorry, what? What did I misrepresent with the Satan thing? Uh, that he used a church in a video. It was actually that his first studio, he bought a church and then removed imagery of Jesus and replaced it with images, logos of the beast. But again, I was saying, well, what okay, to be fair, I, was I feel like that is nitpicking. By... I brought up the sentiment and concept. I don't think that changes the broad point. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you're, you're, you're downplaying so, it. And it's oh, like, he's nitpicking. I, I'm sure Mr. Beast maliciously removed photos of Jesus because of how much he fucking hates him so much. He despises his rival and instead wanted to move in his own logo out of pure hatred and malice because he's a vessel for Satan. Or, the more reasonable thing is exactly how he said, that there wasn't enough warehouses in his area, so we got a church, a big uh, building to record his videos in, and then obviously wanted to make it look like a studio, so he brought in studio type of things to make it the Mr. Beast Studio. 
Yeah. Mr. Beast also died and then rose on the third day. Bro, do I even have to say anything for this one? That is, <laughs> dude, citing the I spent 50 hours buried alive video <laughs> as fucking rising on Easter morning. Mr. Beast has performed great miracles and Mr. Beast teaches children to worship money, which the Bible clearly describes as the root of all evil. In the Bible, Christ also warns, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Now the main function of this second beast or false prophet is to get the world to worship the first beast. He is not the Antichrist. He is the spokesperson for the Antichrist. And the false prophet also causes people to get the mark of the beast, which is a mark literally placed on the forehead or the wrist of an individual. The Bible describes that without this mark, people will not be able to buy or sell. But getting this mark is considered an unforgivable sin. The most hilarious part about all of this is that he spent like hours of research into this one segment and writing it up because he thought there's actual substance or legitimacy to it. You know what I mean? He did his research on the book of Revelations. He cross-referenced things that people were saying to him with actual video clips of Jimmy saying that he bought a church. He was putting in the mark of the beast, bringing up the team C's and team trees example. It really seems like he thought there was some substance to this, or, or at least it was worth fleshing out in a video. I mean, he does have it in the background, which this background is a very fitting setting <laughs> for this type of segment. So if Mr. Beast is the second beast, who is the first? And what is this mark? Well, some Christians speculate that the mark of the beast will be a medically implanted computer chip, similar to a Neuralink, something that Mr. Beast has expressed great interest in. Hmm, what a coincidence that my cherry-picked examples of some Christians believing that the true mark of the beast will come in the form of a Neuralink. Coincidentally, something that Mr. Beast has shown a lot of interest in. What the fuck? am I watching? Coincidence, I think not. Who thinks this? What are some Christians? Can you cite anybody? Can you show a clip of anything? Mr. Beast has been a spokesperson for Elon Musk on many occasions, but he's also been a spokesperson for Steve Jobs and PewDiePie and Mark Rober, the Mark of the Beast. <laughs> Is anyone named Mark just going to be like now used as evidence? If Mr. Beast works with anyone named Mark, Mark, Mark of the Beast, really makes you want, makes you think, dude. You know the pieces are starting to come together here, dude. If Mr. Beast would work with Mark, Mark Wahlberg, would he be fucking guilty of the same thing too? How is this not a meme? How is this like a real segment that was edited and recorded? Obviously, this is all up to your interpretation. Personally, what makes the most sense to me is that the Antichrist would not be a person but a company, the company of YouTube or Google. I mean, Google did drop their strange motto of don't be evil. And Mr. Beast has dedicated his life to promoting YouTube. He's inexplicably motivated to do so. Again, this is sick lore. Personally, I don't believe any of it literally, uh, except for the fact that I do believe YouTube will cause the death of humanity. So yeah, that was the whole segment, and I had a conversation with him a little bit afterwards when I talked to him on stream a little bit, and he didn't have a lot of time to talk about it, but I quickly like wanted to get in the question of asking about the Antichrist segment and see what that was about, hopefully get some more insight, and this was the clip. What I'm saying what? in that document, and, and I filmed a bit about me talking about this, and I didn't include it in my video, because it is all hearsay and it's all speculation. I'm just saying, that there are people who worked at Mr. Beast who unironically speculated that he might be the Antichrist. And they gave me <laughs> a list of ways that he might be the Antichrist. Like yeah, it's crazy. Do you um do you believe in those things or do you like think any of them are like have some weight to them? No, no, not I don't believe in the theories themselves at all. I, I believe that there are people who at Mr. Beast who unironically think he might be the Antichrist. And that's what's crazy about right. it. Not that okay, he is. Do you, he's just do you know how it's crazy? No, I understand what he's doing. I 100% know what he's saying. But I guess, um, what's, I guess I don't think that kind of thing should be necessary or relevant to bring into a document and kind of just gives Mr. Beast an easy ammunition to respond. Like, dude, let's write off everything this guy is saying. He's calling me the fucking Antichrist or bringing up examples of other people alleging this. I mean, that's one point. He'd still have to refute the other 50. You know what I, I mean? Bro, I agree, you but say, I'm saying- You say no, 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 easy I'm ammunition, saying, but it's wait, been wait, a wait. month and he hasn't responded, so. No, dude, I hear you. I'm just trying to say, crop in your arguments to be the most like, I guess refined or 100% proven will only benefit you. That's all I'm saying. But hey, that's just my advice. A smaller channel than you. So that's all. Yeah. Well, 
I okay. mean, I think you make you make good points. You make good points, lyrics. You do. But yeah, that's my overall thoughts on it. Again, I just want to preface. I feel like I've prefaced it enough, but geez, people are so annoying with the Mr. Beast coverage. If you make any slight comment that could be perceived as a defense of Mr. Beast, everybody just is instantly comes in your fucking uh, replies saying, "Bro's trying to ride on it. Bro's trying to get a free ride on Mr. Beast meat." It's just the most brain dead nothing comments. But uh, yeah, I mean, again, at the end of the day, as I explained in previous videos, is that it's in your best interest if you want to take down Mr. Beast to finally crop and tune your arguments so that you only can pin someone to the uh, nail some to the cross on 100% facts and evidence because if you start throwing anything at the wall and start throwing more flimsy arguments and mudding up the water then Mr. Beast can discredit you easily and once he's discredited you once he can make you look like an untrustworthy source so even if you have real legitimate arguments that you have towards Mr. Beast it's gonna get drowned out by all the garbage that you've already thrown at him but yeah unfortunately I'm not paid opposition definitely not getting as paid as much as Jake Weddle did by Mr. Beast. That's the only buddy getting paid in this whole situation. Just trying to be fair, trying to look at all sides. Again, there's very much things to commend Mr. Beast for. Uh, I mean, condemn him for. <laughs> Let the mask slip there. No, but there's thing, uh, things for to condemn Mr. Beast for. Hiring the registered sex offender. Unethical charity giveaways. I feel like I have to preface this every Mr. Beast video because people are so annoying. Like, you must condemn Hamas. You must condemn Mr. Beast every time you talk about him. But yeah, that's my thoughts on this. Um, Dog Pack Part 3 video coming out soon because I haven't covered that. I'm kind of doing catch up with these videos. A little bit late, but regardless, daily videos, like and subscribe. Part 3 will be coming out uh, soon, talking about the Dog Pack video as well as some other stuff. I got some old videos to cover as well and talk about. But ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you tomorrow for another video. See ya.